You know what? Actually, I'm going to refer to old me for this. That's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Spartacus, the 1960 film directed by Stanley Kubrick and starring Kirk Douglas as the title character. That intro actually was a review that I started to do for the television show, which admittedly I'm a lot more acquainted with with such great lines as My cock is magic! I really enjoyed the show. I tried to review it when I first started doing reviews back in 2015, but the camera just kept cutting out and I got so frustrated. But funnily enough, I've kept it on the computer this whole time. Maybe one day I'll get around to reviewing the show again and watching it again. That was my first introduction. I know the gist of this film, I know of its turmoils, I know of its stories. I obviously know of the I Am Spartacus scene and actually, again, not from this movie, but from undergrads. IMG Prime! Aha! Uh -huh! IMG Prime! IMG Prime! IMG Prime! I am Spartacus! But after having watched the film, I get why it was such a huge thing back in the day. I get why there was a lot of controversy for certain scenes. And it's an amazing spectacle. Is it an amazing film still? Maybe. Uh, not in terms just of age, but actually just in terms of its story pacing. It's an incredibly intriguing tale of a gladiator who rose up against the Roman oppressors and gathered an army of slaves and gladiators alike and reigned terror and chaos on Rome, all the while trying to escape, but ultimately falling to the might of Rome. And this is all encapsulated in three hours. If you want to watch a television show that works out to be about 50 hours, you can watch the show or you can watch this original film. And while you may be a little bit downhearted by how slow the film is, it was made in the 60s. So you've got to address that everything you're seeing in the film is real. Every single person off in the background is real, and that final battle scene is terrifyingly real. When they roll the flaming logs down and you see the stuntmen jump over it, or in some cases get run fucking over by it, you'll know that they really put a lot of effort into this movie back in the day. And it's really crazy to see how this film is put together considering it's made by Stanley Kubrick. Apparently this was the last time he would ever not have 100% control over the narrative and apparently he had a lot of issues with the script including one of its most classic scenes, the Spartacus scene, because he thought that part was stupid. <laughs> Funny enough too because Kirk Douglas fired the original director and suggested Kubrick after working with him on Paths of Glory which is another movie I just reviewed, but by the end of this film they hated each other so much that they didn't want to work with each other again, and Douglas actually regretted firing the first director and then would work with him on his next project, if I'm correct. This film had a huge cast for back in the day. It had huge, expansive extravagance to it. It had huge production value. There's a lot of big name actors in the time, obviously Laurence Olivier, Kirk Douglas, but there's also some up and comers, including Tony Curtis. The guy who won Best Supporting Actor in this film, I'm not even gonna try to remember his name, but I find it very strange that he won, considering his character is just so eh in the movie. He's like a comedic sidekick of the film, and he's the one who wins Best Supporting, not anyone else in this movie. But there's a really, really cool scene that was restored for the Criterion version, which is the one I watch, including Laurence Olivier and Tony Curtis. It's this bathing scene where Tony Curtis is Laurence Olivier's Crassus' his slave and he's bathing him. And there's this very insinuating conversation that's had between the two. They're dancing around it, but the whole time you know what they're talking about. But apparently it was so risque back in the time, they actually cut the whole scene. And when Criterion tried to restore the scene, they actually had none of the audio left. Tony Curtis was still alive, so he was able to do the voice work for his own character. However, Lawrence Olivier had long since passed. So it's actually Anthony Hopkins voicing Crassus for this particular scene because he was known to have a very good impersonation of Lawrence Olivier. And funny enough though, if you listen real carefully, you can totally hear it's Anthony Hopkins just with the speech pattern. Overall, I enjoy the movie. It's obviously a lot more serious than the television show, and it has some fantastic music in it. The script, when it is real hot, it's great. And Kirk Douglas does a fantastic job of Spartacus. I really enjoy everyone in this film. Maybe my biggest criticism of it is its length, because it is a big, grand, epic story, and it deserves the length of it, but it does 
kind of drag in a few bits, particularly the ending, because every time you think the movie is over, it just keeps going, kind of like Return of the King almost. There's about three different moments where I thought the movie was over, but it just kept going. It's not as much of a, I must watch it, I must buy it sort of feeling I had with Paths of Glory, maybe because of the length, but it still is a pretty grand epic. Back in the 60s, this would have probably cost quite a bit to put together, considering the battle scenes, the production design, the sets, the costumes, everything. It's a really great undertaking, and I can't deny that the film doesn't do well in those areas. If anything, like I said, the pacing just kind of doesn't really keep with you, and there's a lot of points where I was looking at my phone because I was a little bit bored with what was going on. Basically, in the end, if you want a super serious version of the story of Spartacus, watch the movie. If you want a more risque, but kind of more entertaining version of it, watch the television show. I really should try and watch the show again. It's been, I finished it in 2015 and I still own actually all of the seasons on DVD, even though it's on Netflix last time I checked. In the end, Spartacus is a very grand epic film. It is stoic, it is timeless in certain aspects of itself. It's a fantastic look back into how cinema was made over 60 years ago. But some parts haven't aged well in terms of entertainment value, but that's more so my opinion. Maybe some people might still think this is a timeless epic, and in certain aspects it kind of can be viewed as that. Just for me, it's not as entertaining as I thought it would be. It doesn't sit with me as well as I guess most would. But in the end, I'm gonna give Spartacus a five out of seven. It's still a fantastic movie. It's a fantastic piece of history, and it's a fantastic thing to watch and to witness. In the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, my cock is magic. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.